Okay, so in this talk, we are going to try an interesting exercise, which sort of about associativity. And that is that if you have a magma, which is not associated, so the binary operation is not assumed to be associated, but we are interested in some elements relative to which it is. So I call an element in the set, so S is the set, star is the binary operation, magma just means set is binary operation. I call an element in the set left associative, if, uh, if this holds. So this is the same associativity condition, but A is fixed, and I'm just allowing B and C to vary over all of S. Okay? Hmm? So, for instance, if, if you had an identity element, it would be left associative, right? To satisfy this condition. Even if you have a left neutral element, it would satisfy this condition. So you could imagine you have a magma where you do have left associative elements, even though the magma as a whole is not associative, right? If it, the whole thing were associative, then this every element would be left associative. But if the whole thing is not associative, you could still have some left associative elements. Now what you're asked to prove is that the set of left associative elements is closed under multiplication or closed under the operation of the magma. Okay? Okay, so go ahead. What do you want? Can you formulate it precisely? Let's just give a name to the set of left associative elements. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so, so let's say we are given, so what do we need to prove? We need to prove it's closed under multiplication. So we, let's say we are given elements a1, a2, and f. And what do we want to prove? A star. a1 star. a2. is an f. Which more explicitly, what do we want to prove? What do we want to prove explicitly? A1, A2 are left associated. Yeah, which in this top thing, what are it A1 say? star is A2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just say this with A1 star A2 in place of A, right? That's what we want to prove, right? Yeah? Star uh, mm -hmm. anything. Yeah, just call it B. Mm -hmm. Star C is what? Is A1 star A2. Mm -hmm. Star in the bracket B star C for all B comma C in S. So this is what we want to prove. And what can we use in the proof? We can use that A1 is left associative and A2 is left associative. So we want to somehow get from here to here using that A1 is left associative and that A2 is left associative. Okay? But we cannot use A1 star A2 is left associative. So you cannot directly just move the brackets around, right? Mm -hmm. So now what does this remind you of? When you have products of four things, there, there was a nice picture which relates the various ways of associating them. So here, here it is. So I've called them W, X, Y, Z here instead of A1, A2, B, C, but the idea is the same. You have five different ways of parenthesizing products of length 4. Okay? Here? Is this here? Yeah. And, and, and for, and there's, there's relations between them given by associativity. And there's five relations and they go in a circle like this. Now, what are we trying to prove? Well, we, I mean, we just use it to mentally convert the symbols because these are A1, A2, B, C, these are W, X, Y, Z. But that's like, right? You, write something and then somewhere else you need to use it with different symbols. So we have, what is, which one of, what is this? This is a left bracketed one. Where is the left bracketed one? In the pentagon, the top. So we have this one. And what do we want to prove it's equal to? Which one are we? In? This one. They are adjacent to each other, 
and you could have switched directly between them if you knew that the this product a1 star a2 is this, is left associated but that's exactly what we don't know right so we want to go like this but we cannot go along this path right so we cannot use this path here we cannot use it because that requires us to use a w star x is left associated so what do we do instead of going like this how do we go from here to here take the other way around yeah, so you just go like that. Okay. So the the thing to really check is that that all these four steps you are just using either that a one is left associative or that a two is left associative. Okay. You want to keep this in front when doing it, or or is it okay to remove it? Remove it. Okay. Let's just remove it. See. Yeah. So the idea is that you just keep manipulating the things and then see if that you can get here. Okay. Let's start with the left side. Okay, what do we use first? Hmm? We use... What extra. triple? Just tell me the triple on which you are using associated with it first. The first three. The first three. And that's okay because the first one is A1, which is left associated. So you can definitely do the first three. So A1 left associated. You think A1 is in it. Okay, now what? The A2, B, C. You cannot do A2, B, and C because they're not. So you want to do this, this, and this. Oh. Right? You see what I'm saying? You cannot. Oh, uh, yeah. We are, we are to do that's the only okay. thing you can do. So again, you're using a1 is an L, but now with a different triple, right? With these two. So you, what do you get? You get a1 star. Hmm? A2 star B in bracket star C. Okay. Uh, let's move that one. Okay, what next? A2, B, C. Okay, so now A2 is left associative, so you can use A2 as an L. So what will happen? A1 star, A2 star, B star C. And then what do you use? They're almost there. What do you use now? Use A, well, just use a two, a one star a two. So a one, a two, and b stars. Use these three. Mm -hmm. This, this, and this, and you get. And here, what did we use in that? A one. A one. So we use a one three times and a two just once. Makes sense because a one is the one on the left in the product. So that's what we should use more often, right? So we went, we went actually along this path. Wait, wait. Can check that that's exactly how we did our manipulations. Okay, so so that's good. We've shown that a one star a two is is in L. So why did it work? Well, the reason why it worked was that all these steps, the leftmost thing is always either a one or a two, right? Because the leftmost thing has to be one of the two things here. You couldn't use b or c as the leftmost thing ever, right? So so it kind of had to work. Now. You could do something similar for middle associative and right associative elements. So what do you think is the definition of middle associative? Let me close the solution here. So what do you think should be the definition of middle associative? Hmm? Associative. So left associative meant when you put it in the left of the expression, Whatever you put in for the other two, it, the expression associates. What do you think middle associative should mean? Hmm? I'm just asking what, what do you think the natural definition should be? Is there a right associated? Yeah. But there are only three numbers. And yes. Three elements in there. Yeah. So it's the same condition. Yeah. But now it's just, so I'll just write it down. If, uh, just write it here. Here? 
for all now what 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 you put here for all what and what no oh, b is already a, fixed a and c that's all it means to be middle associative oh okay you see what what's happening they're saying fix the letter there and then let the other ones vary arbitrarily so by the way there's another word for left associative it's called left nuclear and middle associative is called middle nuclear and right associative is called right nuclear but but since we want, we are not really doing this as a theory, this is just as an illustrative example. I'm not telling you all the technical terms. Okay, I mean this is not for you, for you to remember. It's just an exercise and manipulation. Okay, what is that relation of right associative? Hmm? For all A B. Okay, so you write the same condition. Okay, now, uh, do you s see why it should be true, why the same state thing should be true for middle associative and right associative? Which means I'm, I want to claim that the set of middle associative elements also forms a sub magma, which means it's closed under multiplication, and the set of right associative elements also forms a sub magma, it's closed under multiplication. Let's just, instead of writing the full proof, let's just see what, what it means on the associativity pentagon. So middle associative, what are the two expressions you want to prove are equal? So you'll have a B1 star B2. Okay. So in one expression, you'll have A, A star. What will you have for one of your expressions? Or just like what you would like to show. For middle associative, what's the thing you want to show? Just the equivalent of this line. What's the equivalent of this line for the middle associative? So you have B1, B2 in your middle thing. You want to show B1 star B2 is the so M is just whatever you whatever are the middle associative elements. So what would the what would this line equivalent be? What's the thing you want to prove? Hmm? A star. Hmm. B1 star B2 in parentheses. And now the whole thing in parentheses star C equals what? A star B1. A, tell me why the parentheses go. So A star B1. So what where do the parentheses? Yeah, now what? B1 yeah, go on. B1 star B2. Hmm. Cold star C. Yeah, so there's actually two levels of parentheses here, right? This is what you want to show. Okay, for all A and C. Okay, now let's just see what this means in the in the associativity pentacle. So where are we? What are our two products? This third left and this one and what one? And the third right. No. The second right. The second left. So these two? The second left. These two, right? Mm -hmm. These two. Yeah. Okay, now how do we do it? Well, we would like to go between this and this directly, but we cannot do that because that's what we want to prove, right? So instead we go along this pathway. Okay. Right, so we go like that. And at every step, what do you have to check? At every step, the middle thing, the middle thing for which you are using middle associativity is either B1 or B2. Right? It's one of these two things. So I've called them WXYZ. Here these are B1 and B2. So at every step, you'll be using either B1 or B2. And you'll be using B1 two of the times and B2 two of the times. Of the four moves you make, two will involve B1 and two will involve B2. Okay? So that's good. Uh, what about right? Let's just do right. So I'll call that set R, the set of right associative elements. What do we want to prove? So C1 and C2 are in R. What do we want to prove? Want to show that C1 star C2 is in R. So how, what's the 
formulation of that? A in bracket A star B mm -hmm. star C one star C two in bracket mm -hmm. equals to A star bracket mm -hmm. B star mm -hmm. C star C another star B, yeah. Yeah. for all A B. Okay, let's now look at what what uh, two things that in that relates. What so what two things does that relate? The second right and the this third one. right. So these two. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? You cannot go directly, right? Because that's exactly what we don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? So how do you go? Go the other way. Go along these four. Okay, or either way. And so you have to use uh, right associativity of C1 and of C2. Which one will you use more often? C1 or C2? C2. C2. You'll use, how many times will you use C2? Three. And how many times will you use C1? One. Okay, good. So you already know how the proof will look like before you've written it out. Okay, great. So we've shown, we haven't actually shown middle associative and right associative, but we know how to do it. We have the outline. Okay, now a couple more things. So first of all, uh, if if S has a left neutral element, that is left associative. Do you agree? Left neutral means when you multiply that on the left, it doesn't change the other value, right? So if if E is left neutral for S, then E is left associative. Mm. Is this is this okay? To write down here? Yeah. Okay. So. Left neutral implies left associated. What is the definition of left neutral? My left identity. What's the definition? E stars A equals to A. For for what A? All A. All A. Okay. Uh, what is the definition of? So this is a claim. This is the definition of left neutral. I'm claiming any such thing is left associated. Uh, what's the corresponding claim for right neutral. Right neutral should be what? Right associated. Okay. And uh, there's no such thing as middle neutral. But so if it is actually neutral, if it's both left and right neutral, then it's associated. Then it's middle associated. In fact, then it's associated all three ways. There is no such thing as middle neutral. So, uh, so right neutral would mean A star E equals A for all A. And neutral would mean E star A is A star E is A for all A. Okay, do you see all these claims, why they are true? This is your left neutral. So, if E is left neutral, then my claim is that E star B star C is E star B star C for all B and C. Why is that? Hmm? You say E is left neutral or A is left neutral. Now I'm saying E is left neutral. If what? If when you plug in E instead of A here, this is true, right? Okay. That's what it would mean to say E is left neutral, right? Mm -hmm. No, sorry. That's what it would mean to say E is left associative. So what I'm saying is, if E is left associate, it's a, if E is left neutral, then it's left associative, which means if E is left neutral, I'm claiming that when you plug E instead of A here, the equality holds. Do you see that? Yeah. Why? So what we want to show, let's write it down. Uh, so what we want to show, E star B star C is E star B star C for all B and C. E is left neutral. So how, why is that true? Because it just, they just equal to each other. Well, what do they both simplify to? B, B star C. Both of them simplify to B star C. Okay. 
Okay, similarly, if E is right neutral, you see, oh, let me just finish writing this. Okay, so both of them simplify to B star. So if E is right neutral, do you see that if you plug in E instead of C here, in the right associative condition, that it satisfies the condition? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, if E is neutral, it's left neutral, so it's left associative. It's right neutral, so it's right associative. But now I'm also claiming it's middle associative. Do you see that? If you plug in E instead of B in the associativity condition, then you'll just get A star C both sides. Yeah. Okay. So, which means that, that if you have a neutral element, left, right, whatever, then it has to actually be inside the left associative ma uh, sub magma. Right? Mm -hmm. If you have a left neutral means inside the left associative sub magma, right neutral means inside the right associative, and middle neutral implies it's in, oh, no, there's no middle neutral. If it's neutral, then it's in all three. Now, is the left associative sub magma, uh, associative? So, as the sub magma of left associative elements, is that sub magma itself associative? Yes. Yes. Why? Well, because you take any triple of things in there, it will associate because the left one is in there. Okay? So, so in fact, this is actually the sub magma is associated. So, it's, it's actually a sub semi group, if you know that term. And the same is true for, for the middle associate and right associate. Okay.